Welcome back to the channel everybody. I'm Trevor with Maker Experiment and in today's video I'm going to cover my five tips for laser cutting materials. Let's get into it. Before we jump into the video I do want to mention that this video is sponsored by Epilogue Laser. Epilogue is who I've been using for probably the past seven or eight years now. I do have a few of their machines. They are fantastic. In this video, I'm going to be using the Epilogue Fusion Edge 12. It is a 60 watt machine. But if you're looking to get into laser machining, go ahead and check them out. I will leave their link in the description below. You can also check out a bunch of my videos where I use their machine pretty much in, I would say the majority of them. Uh, and if you have any questions about them, put those in the comments below and I will do my best to answer those. With that, let's jump into the tips. Tip number one, when you are vector cutting, keep your speed at 20% or lower. The reason for this is if you're using a higher speed, even if the material will cut through and allow for it, sometimes it doesn't produce the best quality when it comes to your cut because the motors have to move so quickly and jump so quickly between the steps in the design that if you have it at more than 20%, sometimes those jumps can be really jagged and not produce the best quality of a line when you're doing that. So if you can, at all possible, keep it less than 20%, those moves will be smoother, you'll get a better cut quality, and you will definitely see that reflected in the design. Now, I'm not gonna say you can't ever go above 20%, but ideally, if you're cutting, try to keep it below 20% and you will be very happy with the quality. However, if you're doing like a giant thing and it's just a border and the cut quality isn't like a make it or break it through paper or mat board or something like that, you can probably go about 20% and it won't have a ton of effect. This is more for detailed cutting and intricate designs. Tip number two is your frequencies. Not all lasers have this ability or this option RF tube lasers do. So frequency is basically how often the laser pulses while it is moving in that direction. For this example, I'm going to do a real machining experience. I will jump into the design real quick and show you what those levers are going to be and then show you the real result. So let's jump into the design side and I will show you how you can adjust your frequency. For the frequency example, I'm going to be using these lines here in my design. I am going to machine them onto a piece of alder wood. Nothing really special about that. You don't have to use alder wood to get this effect. But what's going to happen is in my settings, so for the black one, the top line, I'm going to be doing the same speed and power across all of them. Speed of 20%, power of 10%, and then a frequency vary. So for the black, the frequency is going to be 10% you'll basically see a solid line. For the red, you'll see a frequency of 2%. You'll start to see little dots or dashes. And then for the blue one, I'm going to be doing a frequency of 1%. So the scale is from one to 100%. You can do anywhere in between. I've noticed that pretty much anything above 3% and up, it looks like a continuous line. But when you are cutting, you will definitely see a difference between 3% and say 100%. And there's a lot more that goes into why you would choose a higher or lower frequency. I'm not going to get into that in this video, but I want to show you what the differences is when you play with that lever. So going from here, I'm going to go ahead and print it over to the laser and I will show you what it turns out like. Here's the result of the frequency differences. So the top one was the 10% frequency, the middle one is the 2%, and the bottom one is the 1%. So you can see as you decrease the frequency, the length of time the laser fires across that line gets less and less. So you can actually have a straight line in your design, and then when you go to machine it, you can change the frequency and make it a perforated line for something like a fold line in a card or whatever it might be. 
Tip number three when you are laser cutting is to mask your material in order to get a clean surface finish. For this example, what I'm going to do is I'm going to machine one spot here that cuts all the way through and then one on the mask surface that cuts all the way through. And I will then peel it off on tape so you can see the difference of what happens. So for that, I'm not gonna show you the design, but it will cut all the way through this eighth inch material. This is alder wood and it should cut pretty quickly. But we'll go ahead and cut that and then I will show you the difference side by side. Here are the results side by side. The one on the left didn't have any paper masking. The one on the right still has the masking on. If I show the no masking one, you'll see that the surface finish has some burns around here. It's a really dark, uh, where it's really close together. It can get really dark, kind of grimy looking. And then I accidentally snapped that a little bit when I did it. Oops, it's very thin but you can see all the charred marks on it everywhere it's super thin you get more of that look now this can be an aesthetic look people like but not usually if i take the paper one and peel off the paper so the bad part about using masking is you have to peel off the masking once i peel off the masking it's a nice clean finish all the way around so if i show these side by side the one on the left had no masking whatsoever. The one on the right had a paper masking. It's basically just like masking tape or a transfer tape from vinyl stickers. But you can see how much cleaner the one on the right turns out. This can help your aesthetics a lot and give you a really nice finish. Before I go on to tip number four, if you haven't checked it out yet, I do have a free laser community that is at lasersmadesimple.com community. That's where you can share ideas with like-minded laser owners, get to know people, post your questions there. If you do have questions, share your projects and pretty much everything in between. So if you're interested in that, I will leave a link in the description below. I also have a membership where I do group lives every month and you can find that at lasersmadesimple.com membership. So if you're interested in either of those, I will leave those linked in the description below, but just wanted to put it out there in case any of you uh, we're in need of some laser help or just want to get to know other people that owned not only epilogue lasers, but a whole bunch of other kinds as well. On to tip number four, lift your material off the bed when you are machining it. It doesn't always take that much of a distance, but it, this can reduce the flashback that you can see on the back of some of your cuts. So for example, in the cut we just did in tip number three, you will see all of those little flashbacks that make burn marks on the back of your item. This can be very unpleasant if you are trying to do a double-sided item or if you just want a really good look. I'll show you over at the machine what I'm going to do as far as lifting it up and then show you the result and what that ends up looking like. In this example, I'm not going to mask the front of it because you've already seen what that does in tip number three. So let's jump over there, I will show you what it looks like when you lift it up so yeah let's go all right as far as lifting the material up goes i'm actually using scraps from the cut i just did in step num or tip number three all i'm going to do is set the material on top of those scraps so it is off the bed you can actually kind of rock it if you wanted to but it is held up about an eighth of an inch We'll go ahead and machine it somewhere in the middle. You want to make sure you don't machine it where the lifted up piece is or your support is. But let's go ahead and cut it and show you what it looks like. As you will remember, this one that was on the left was done in tip number three. I didn't have anything underneath of it. There was no masking. And 
this was sitting straight on the bed. This is the result of the back of it if it's sitting straight on the bed. As part of tip number four, the one on the right was lifted off of the bed using scrap material from the first one. You can see how much cleaner that looks because there's no flashback from the grid. It's not sitting straight on the grid, so the laser doesn't really have the ability to come back up on the material or transfer marks from the grid to the material, so it leaves a much cleaner look. And because it's the backside, you don't really have to mask it as much and you still get a really clean finish. So that is tip number four. And tip number five, you don't always need air assist. In fact, sometimes you don't want it at all. In this example, I'm going to be cutting some paper. I'm going to do one with the air assist off and one with the air assist on. So starting out, I'll do it with it on first so that you can see what happens and then I'll turn it off and show you what happens as well. Now, I do want to preface this with be careful because turning off the air assist means that there's no protection against the cause of flame inside of the laser, meaning that the air is not putting out those micro flames you typically see. If you're doing things like vector scoring or vector cutting really thin materials, you typically don't need it. But when you're cutting things like acrylic or wood that are thicker, like eighth inch and up, uh, typically you want to use air assist at all times. Just keep that in mind as you're going through this, that if you're cutting paper, you may not want it. So let's check out why. In the machine, I just have a thin piece of printer paper. I'm going to put that up here in the top left corner. And I'll be cutting the design right next to each other, but let's watch what happens. All right, so this first one is going to be with the air assist on. Just pay attention to the scrap pieces that come off of the cut and notice what happens to them. As you could see, while it was machining, the paper was blowing everywhere. And this can actually cause scraps to overlap while you're cutting and get in the way of your laser cutting. This one actually got kind of lucky because they kept blowing just far enough away that it didn't end up cutting itself again. So I kind of got lucky with that one. But you saw how they were blowing around during the process. So now pay attention when I machine the second one right here what happens to those scraps because they will not blow around like they did with this one. As you can see in the second example where I didn't use air assist, all of the parts are still exactly where they were when they cut. They didn't blow around or anything like what happens with the air assist on. So if you're using a paper material or something thin where the parts can blow around, consider not using the air assist. And I should mention that when I say turn the air assist off, that's actually the compressor that sits next to the machine. You can turn that off and it will stop supplying air to the system. That's gonna do it for my five tips for laser cutting materials. If you have any tips of your own, leave those in the comments below. I'd love to see what you guys come up with. But I wanna thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If it has been helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications so that you know when I come out with new videos. Feel free to share it with all of your laser friends and get the word out there. And also go check out my Instagram, at Maker Experiment, where I share things along the way. But I wanna thank you for taking the time to watch this video, and I'll see you in the next one.